G'day guys and gal. After spending the last week busting my balls and getting the Custodes cosplay video done, it's time to go back to our roots and talk about Warhammer lore in a fun and potentially annoying cringy way. Other than the Orcs, not many people are having fun in Warhammer 40k. The majority of characters are fighting for their lives and are incredibly depressed. The Harlequins, however, are a different story. With a jolly step and good grace, these memesters tear across the galaxy, sodomizing chaos and showing that not all Elder are pointy-eared pansies. I mean, it would be pretty impossible not to have fun when your god is literally a clown. Before we get started, in Warhammer, bigger is always better, but that's not always the case for real life. Sometimes slick, sharp, and ergonomic is the way to go. Hence why today I've partnered up with The Ridge to bring you The Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is the latest and greatest in wallet innovation, holding all your essential cards and cash whilst having none of the bulge of a traditional fake leather wallet that you got for Christmas. It's also incredibly tough and comes with a lifetime warranty. Now that is a brand who backs their product. I guarantee this will be the first wallet you own that you can fit and store in your mouth. Coming in 30 colors and styles, there is plenty options to make this snazzy bit of metal yours. I personally chose the carbon fiber style because it looks cool. Imagine this, you're in a bar, a hot chick looks at you, you go over to her and offer to buy her a drink. Then you whip out and fumble the crunchy old wallet that belonged to your dad, full of coins, receipts, and parking tickets. You ain't getting lucky with that, bro. I mean, you ain't getting lucky anyway because that situation will never happen due to the fact that you watch Warhammer lore videos in your spare time, but you get what I mean. So if you want to boost your chances of getting lucky in your own imagination by getting your very own Ridge wallet, then click my link below and use the code MAJORKILL to get 10% off and free shipping worldwide. And if for some strange reason you don't love it, then the Ridge offers a 45 day money back guarantee. Cheers to the Ridge for sponsoring this video. Today I'll be going over the lore and story of the Harlequins, how they came to be, who their god is, and each of the different Harlequin types, including the Solitaires who are so badass that they can kill space marines like I kill my liver every Saturday. Let's get into it. Harlequins are a relatively new faction of Eldar. They weren't around during the height of the Eldar Empire or even during the fall of the Eldar. This is due to the fact that becoming a Harlequin means sacrificing everything to become a tool for the Laughing God to use. As things were going quite well before the fall of the Eldar, the Eldar didn't want to give up their squishy lives to join the circus. It took quite a while after the Slaanesh sodomized the Eldar before the Harlequins were formed, but as the Laughing God would say, all according to plan. Now, you should probably know what the fall of the Eldar was. If not, I have a couple of videos that cover it. But basically, the Eldar Empire had become so powerful and efficient that the Eldar became incredibly bored, hence started having blood orgies to keep themselves entertained. Fair enough. This would have been relatively harmless if it wasn't for the fact that the intense emotional turmoil that comes from billions of psychic space elves slamming the incisions they just made on their family members caused the new Chaos God to be born, Slaanesh. The birth of Slaanesh killed 95% of the Elder and made life way shittier for the remaining 5%. When Slaanesh was born, she also devoured the majority of the Eldar gods, other than Cain, who was shattered by Khorne, Isha, who was taken by Nurgle to be his waifu, and the laughing god Seo Gorach, who was the only god with enough common sense to get the hell out of there. A funny note here, as the Elder were beginning to fall, the Elder gods all had their own way of dealing with it. Cain got angry, Isha cried, Vol turned his back on them, and even Asurian felt pretty hopeless. Sir Gorach, however, found it all quite funny. A, because it was pretty funny that the most advanced, powerful, and wise race in the galaxy would be brought low due to BDSM, and B, because it would make Sir Gorach, the physically weakest Eldar god, the most powerful due to being the only one still kicking. I don't know what it is, but Sir Gorach is made differently. All the other gods in Warhammer are so predictable and they just follow a pattern. They're like fucking cosmic math equations, but not Sio. This dude has time and time again done shit so against the godlike grain that he's genuinely one of the biggest players in 40k. It was he who told Kane how to shatter the Nightbringer. It was Seer who tricked the Catan into destroying each other. It was Seer who escaped Slaanesh and founded the Harlequins who have saved the Elder time and time again. It seems as if it will be Seer who eventually outplays Slaanesh and saves the Elder. More on that later. Sometime after the fall, all of the followers of the Laughing God across each craft world and Komara felt a calling, an extreme urge to enter the webway, so they did and even left their spirit stones behind which is generally considered a really bad idea. 
The law hasn't covered exactly what kind of metamorphosis these wannabe harlequins go through, but when they emerge to do Sierra's bidding, they're faster, stronger, and significantly deadlier than normal Eldar. Like Harlequin's pretty much the only Eldar faction who consistently win pretty much every battle they engage in. This power comes at the cost of their previous lives, family, and even identity. Their personalities are still very much intact, you know, a bit changed. I mean, you can't dress up as a murder clown and simultaneously dance while skull-fucking demons to death and not have a personality. The first sighting of the Harlequins is when the armies of Ulthwe were under attack by a bunch of rapists. What? Slaneshi demons are definitely rapists. After a short battle, the demons felt a taste of their own medicine and were cast back into the warp. Now I've mentioned the Solitaires a few times now. They are god tier warriors who are able to kill greater demons in duels and can make a space marine look like Ricky. It took the Harlequins over 1,500 years to produce their first Solitaire, which is testament to how rare these monsters are. The first one to be seen was during a performance the Harlequins put on for some of their Eldar cousins. See, the Harlequins aren't just colourful killers, they are the keepers of the Eldar's lore and history, and they're the bridge between different Eldar factions. As such, when they are giving Chaos a huge headache, they travel between Craft Worlds, Exodite Worlds, and Komora to give extremely intricate and often horrifying performances in order to remind the Eldar of who they are and how they fell. The first Solitaire was unveiled at one of these events, as she took upon the role of Slanesh as her troop, which is what a group of Harlequins is called, performed a reenactment of the fall. Obviously the audience was like, bruh, what the fuck, as any other elder other than a solitaire who attempts to play the role of Sinesh goes insane. To make Solitaires even more badass, when a Harlequin dies, his or her soul is saved from Slanesh's spiky pussy by Sir Gorach, who claims their souls instead. However, due to a Solitaire basically mocking Slanesh by playing as her, Slanesh gets an extreme hard-on for their souls, and works extra hard to claim them upon death. Despite this, Sio being Sio will always try to save the Solitaire's soul and often is successful in doing so, adding to the mockery and embarrassing Slanesh further. Time and time again, the Harlequins have saved the Eldar's ass, driving the Emperor's children out of the craft world of Luganeth, helping Vec descend to the leader of the Dark Elder, stomping out Orc Wars before they can ruin people's shit, saving Maiden Worlds from Nurgle's AIDS juice, saving humans from themselves by killing them when they try to mess with shit they don't understand. They've even made the Necrons and Tau their bitch on occasion. Some Harlequins are more subtle, but still incredibly effective, teaming up with human Inquisitors to win key victories against Chaos, and helping key characters to achieve their destiny, such as convincing Prince Uriel to pick up the Spear of Twilight and helping the shit out of the Inari. The Harlequins are definitely not benevolent or nice, however. They have been known to kidnap humans and space marines and give them to the Dark Elder to torture, and they have slaughtered innocents for no apparent reason. The Harlequins' extreme diversity in regards to their actions can be explained by each troop having one of three themes. Some troops embody the light, and will fight like brave heroes, saving people in apparent acts of selflessness. Some troops embody the dark, and will fight like ruthless killers, doing the Eldar's dirty work and making people shit themselves. Finally, some troops embody the twilight, which is, you know, the in-between. Each troop having a theme allows them to fight with extreme synergy. Fighting a troop of Harlequins is like fighting a methed up bodybuilder wielding two double-ended dildos. You're just gonna get fucked. Now whilst the Harlequins aren't craft welders, they do kind of have their own special craft world, the Black Library. The Black Library is a hidden craft world that travels the webway and stores pretty much all of knowledge of chaos in it. It's incredibly difficult to enter unless you're invited in, and even if you do get in, it won't be long before you're sent packing. Araman learnt this the hard way, but I guess Araman learns everything the hard way considering how many times he's fucked up at this point. Just like Space Marine chapters, Waz, Cabals, and Necron dynasties, the Harlequins have their own sub-factions called Masks, each with their own style and colour schemes. However, as Harlequins all wear masks and just kind of do the same shit to different people, there isn't a whole lot that separates each mask. Only so much diversity you can give to murder clowns, you know? In saying that, if this video does well, I'll do another one explaining every single Harlequin mask for ya. Before we get into what Harlequins and their meme god are currently up to, let's take a look at all the different Harlequin types. Firstly, we have the Players, who are the rank and file Harlequin, although it pains me to refer to them as that, considering that even the most basic of Harlequins are still absolute beasts. Despite being a lower level Harlequin, they're equipped with awesome gear, such as dual weapons and a holographic field which makes them incredibly hard to see clearly. 
Then we have the Troop Masters, who are the officers or commanders of a Harlequin Troop. As such, they are more or less just incredibly powerful players and have similar or better equipment. After a troop of Harlequins has absolutely wrecked some scrubs, it's the responsibility of the Troop Master to leave behind the calling card. Because of course it is. Now we have the Shadow Seers, who are the Harlequin Psychers. Unlike most Psychers, Shadow Seers don't put their war powers towards lightning bolts or making your balls erupt. Instead, they focus on spreading fear and confusion, making enemies feel tired, or straight up making them kill themselves. You know, all the funny ways to use your war powers. The Shadow Seers often narrate the Harlequin performances and will generally be the ones to act as envoys between the different Eldar factions. Now onto the Death Jesters, who are more or less just Marg and Ra wannabes. They look like a clownier version of the big man and wield big ass guns that they use to devastating effect. Their cannons are called Shrieker Cannons, which if they hit you, you quickly swell up and explode, showering your brothers in arms with your biomass. They're incredibly sadistic, but also quite funny, at least to the Dark Elder who love hanging out with them. Examples of their humor include knocking out enemies and then dressing the enemies up with the remains of their comrades or just rearranging enemy corpses into sex positions. I'm not even joking. Then we have the Skyweavers, who are more or less just colorful jet bikes with a couple more features, such as an extra seat and some spicy weaponry. After that, we have the Star Weavers, which are once again just a variant of an Eldar craft. This can be used as a troop transport or just to peel peel some people from. Then we have the Void Weavers, who are similar to the Star Weavers, except they are less about carrying troops and more about blowing people up, and boy oh boy, do people get blown. Finally, the Solitaires. We've already talked a bit about them, but I'll give you some more fun facts. Solitaires travel the galaxy alone. When they team up with a Harlequin troop, it's only for a short while to accomplish a goal before they set off again. Solitaires are also immune to psychers and warp powers, as well as any technology which seeks to compromise their minds. Psychers are incredibly uncomfortable around Solitaires, as Solitaires never show any emotion. However, they still love memes. There is a bit of Solitaire lore which I love, where a squad of Chaos Marines are attacking a world and then they detect a presence. Within seconds, the entire squad has been murdered by a single Solitaire. As the leader of the squad is dying and shocked at what has just happened, he sees the Solitaire bow after giving one hell of a performance. On the rare occasion that Sir Gorach disguises himself as an elder and travels the physical galaxy, he almost always takes the form of a solitaire. So there's your fun facts about each Harlequin type. Now onto what the Harlequins are up to. In recent times, many Elder are feeling the call of the Laughing God, hence the Harlequins are rapidly growing. There is a special book in the Black Library created by the Laughing God, which has been sealed shut for thousands of years. However, it has finally opened and revealed one final performance, one final chance to beat Slanesh. Somehow, Sio Gorach plans to use Slanesh's desire to consume the Eldar against her, resulting in her doom and the return of the Eldar to power. If only GW released viable Eldar models, maybe this prophecy could go somewhere. And that does us for today, guys, the lore and story of the Harlequins. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more clowny content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.